the fundamental theorem of algebra. All this says is that if f of x is a polynomial of a positive degree n, then we are guaranteed to have at least one zero in the complex number system. That doesn't seem to say a lot, except that it does assure us that we can find at least one solution, even if it's a complex number. Now, a corollary of that is the linear factorization theorem, which says that if, poly if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, where n is positive, then f has precisely n linear factors such that x minus c1 times x minus c2 all the way down to x minus cn are the factors, and all these c values are complex numbers. That's a fancy way of saying that the number of factors a polynomial has equals the degree of the polynomial. So a quadratic has two factors, a cubic has three factors, a quartic has four factors, and so on and so on. Now we can use this along with the rational zero test to factor polynomials. What's the rational zero test? Well, it says that if a polynomial of this form right here has integer coefficients, so that's pretty important, they have to be integer coefficients, not fractions, not radicals, then every rational zero of f has the form p over q where p and q have no common factors other than one, and p is a factor of the constant, and q is the factor of the lead coefficient. So if I wanted to list all possible rational zeros of this polynomial, then p would be plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 8, plus or minus 12, and plus or minus 24. Q are all the factors of the lead coefficient, which are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 9. Now, all possible rational zeros of this polynomial will be p over q. So that would be 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 3 over 1, 4 over 1, and so on. Then 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 2 over 9, and so on. And you eliminate duplicates. For example, 3 over 9 would not be used because that reduces to 1 over 3. OK, that's a heck of a lot of numbers to try. So what do we do? Well. Luckily, we can bring in our calculator and graph. So you see that I've entered the polynomial into y equals. I look at the graph, and hey, it looks to me like x equals 3 might be a good candidate for testing. So let's try it. And remember that we use synthetic division. So I'm going to go 9, negative 9 negative 58, 4, and 24. And let's try a positive 3. So I bring down the 9. 3 times 9 is 27. Minus 9 is 18. 3 times 18 is 54. Minus 58 is negative 4. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. Plus 4 is negative 8. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. Hooray! Plus 24 is 0. OK. So we know that that works. But this polynomial right here is still a third degree. So what might be a good candidate here? Well, how about negative, I don't know, 2 thirds? And if you want to test it, we're kind of cheating here. I'm going to put negative 2 divided by 3. Yay, that works. So I'll drop down and I'll go negative 2 thirds. Negative 2 thirds times 9 is negative 6. Negative 2 thirds times 6. Negative 6 is positive 4. Plus 18 is 22. Uh, wait a minute, did I do that right? Let's see, negative positive 4 plus 18 is 22. OK, let's see if this is going to work. OK, I see what my mistake is. I forgot to start with 9. 
So back to the drawing board. Bring down the 9. 9 times negative 2 thirds is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 18 is 12. That's better. OK, negative 2 thirds times 12 is negative 8. Minus 4 is negative 12. And negative 12 times negative 2 thirds is positive 8. 0. So now we've got it down to a quadratic. And if I wanted to list this in factored form, I could say that f of x equals x minus 3 times x plus 2 thirds times 9x squared plus 12x minus 12. And if I wanted to find the zeros for this, I can set it equal to 0 and try and factor it. And if the factoring won't work, then of course I can always use the quadratic formula. So that's how you find all the factors of a polynomial. One thing I need to say is that the rational zero test lets us find every possible rational zero. There may not be rational zeros. They may all be complex. And if that's the case, you might go through the entire list and nothing will work. And you know what? There's nothing you can do about it. Just that's the way some polynomials are. Another helpful hint is that complex zeros occur in conjugate pairs. So if I have this polynomial to begin with, and I know that positive 2i is a 0, then I automatically know that negative 2i is another 0. And if I have two zeros, I can create a quadratic by adding them together, 2i plus negative 2i is 0, and multiplying them, 2i times negative, I'm getting ahead of myself here, times negative 2i is negative 4i squared, which is positive 4. All right, so that means that the quadratic that contains these two zeros is x squared minus the sum times x plus the product, which of course is x squared plus 4. What good does that do me? Well, I can take x squared plus 4 and divide it into our original polynomial. 2x to the fourth minus x cubed plus 7x squared minus 4x minus 4. I'm going to put a 2x squared there. That will give me a 2x squared plus 0x cubed plus 8x squared. Whoop, that's a 2x to the fourth, isn't it? Subtract negative x cubed minus x squared, bring down the minus 4x, multiply by negative x, negative x cubed plus 0x squared minus 4x. When I subtract, I get a negative x squared minus 4, multiply by negative 1, and I get no remainder, which is, should be the case, because we knew that both of the zeros are inside that polynomial. So that polynomial right there, that quadratic, has to be a factor. Then you can do the quadratic formula or factor on the quotient and get your last two zeros. OK, so that's pretty much it. And we will work on homework problems together in class. Have a good evening.